here we have a freshwater turtle. Turtles have scales which helps them prevent water loss. Sensory perception such as touch, sight, smell, and taste is well developed. And uh, as you can see, the shell uh, the sh shell is composed of two portions: the upper carapace region and the, the carapace region has these uh, little segmentation that are called scutes. And on the bottom of the turtle, we have the plastron, and uh, both the plastron and the carapace are carved from the same dermal bone. The dissection of this uh, freshwater turtle, um, uh, usually the plastron and the upper carapace are fused together, but uh, in this case it's been cracked by the corporation that, that uh, provides the specimen. So I have to make incisions along the along the portion of the uh, the plastron uh, to remove uh, the connective tissue between the muscles of the the uh, forelimbs and the uh, plastron. So I will continue along here to try to avoid any damage to the the uh, specimen. Head and the forelimb, and then we have the trachea and the bronchus, and we have the three chambered heart. And then in here, we have the small intestine, the rectum, the cloaca, the tail. We have the liver, this is large object right here. And now we're removing the liver, which is this whole large section here. The reason we are doing this is to gain access into the lungs which are on the dorsal side of the body cavity and they are protected by the shell. <laughs> so the liver is essentially one mass but it is composed of a right portion and a left portion and the right side in respect to the turtle has been removed and now we are working on the left side. Delving deeper into the thoracic cavity. Just trying to remove a little bit more of the liver tissue. We can see it's very important.
This is a model of the turtle shell. The model shows how the vertebra have fused with the shell. The shell is essentially a rib cage for the turtle, and this body plan has not changed for over 200 million years. This is the bladder, and then we have the ovaries down here. Turtles are egg-laying creatures, and they are internally fertilized. And we have the gallbladder, which we removed with the liver. And then we have the lungs over here, right there. And then we have the pancreas right here, attached to the small intestine. This image is a dorsal view of the turtle's heart. The turtle's heart is a three-chambered structure, meaning it has two atriums and a single ventricle. The atriums in this model are represented by the brownish structure. The atria lie above the ventricle, which is the lighter pinker shaded structure at the bottom of the image. Atria are classified as left and right, and the ventricle is separated by a partial septum. The circulatory system is responsible for blood flow throughout the body. Reptiles have a double circulatory system consisting of a systemic circuit and a pulmonary circuit. The systemic circuit supplies blood to the body and the pulmonary supplies blood to the lungs. In addition to the main system of circulation, a reptile possesses the hepatic portal system and the renal portal system. The hepatic portal system supplies blood to the liver through the hepatic portal vein. Hepatic veins carry the blood to the post cable. The renal portal system supplies blood to the kidneys via the renal arteries. Blood then is transported through a network of capillaries in the kidneys and to the post cable via the renal veins. All vertebrates except mammals have a renal, renal portal system. These are preserved turtle eggs. Turtles reproduce via sexual reproduction and fertilization occurs internally. Turtles are egg-laying creatures, meaning they are oviparous. Turtle eggs are example of amniotic eggs, which are vital for terrestrial life. The extra embryonic membrane protect the eggs from desiccation while allowing for a certain amount of gas exchange to take place. The protective shell can be leathery or calcareous and is also porous.